Hello, my name's Francis and I'm an artist and drawing tutor. I'll be running a workshop for drawing later this year at the Royal Overseas League, but in the meantime, the Royal Overseas League at home have asked me to create this short instructional video. If you'd like to draw along, all you need is some paper, a pencil and a spherical household object. Alright, okay, so the first thing I want to do um, I've got my paper here and I'm using a 2B pencil, which should be perfectly good. Um, I've placed my onion, which is what I'm using, my spherical object, um, just in front of the paper. And it's lit from above at the 45 degrees, so I've got my sort of highlights closest to the light um, and the darkest shadows sort of away. I've turned the onion so that it sort of has, has landed in a sort of aesthetic in a sort of interesting position for me to sort of visually, so I'm happy with that. And the first thing I want to do is sort of wrap a, a line around the silhouette and start towards the top, um, top of the ellipse. So I'm just going to place it sort of on the page, kind of nice and centrally. Um, yeah, and, and start to build these curves. Um, now as I sort of look my way around the subject around this sort of outline. I see the ellipse is um, intersected at various points. Um, first of all by the shadows sort of coming in here. So I'm going to put a, a marker on for that. And then down at the bottom obviously we've got this sort of detail of the, the roots. So I'm going to sort of put that there first. It's just going to help me build the curve around. An ellipse is a slightly tricky shape to sort of gauge first off. It's quite a big estimation but if you can cut it down into smaller sort of segments then it's easier which is good so I'm just gonna make a note as well of the um, this is where the shadow sort of comes in uh, from the bottom so I'll put that there lovely um, yeah there's sort of a shoulder, there's sort of a, a, a knuckle there where the ellipse isn't perfectly round, so I'll sort of put that there. Great, okay. So there's obviously this sort of top tufty bit. I'm not quite sure what that's called, um, but let's put it in anyway. So I sort of look down to here where the shadow uh, cuts across. I think it comes out a little bit for like that vertical line there. I sort of line that. I think that's probably the right place for that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about the internal parts of this just yet. I'm going to go for the overall um, shape of it again. This outline of it. Um, it's always the biggest. It's always the easiest place to start is with the biggest shapes, really. So we want to get those on first. Lovely. Now that I've got this uh, this bigger shape, I can begin to subdivide it. Uh, yeah. I always find once you sort of start with these things and you, you make a few measurements then you sort of get a sense of uh, of the scale of a thing and, and, and the drawing becomes much easier. Um, just sort of, sort of jump in really. So great, okay so I'm happy with that. Uh, we'll put, let's put some details in. Let's put some of these little tufts in down at the bottom. One, two, three. Um, I'm being quite sort of loose. I mean, this is only a quick drawing. This is sort of sketch, really. So I'm not worried too much about being sort of accurate, sort of absolutely pinpoint accurate or anything. Um, there's a lovely sort of bit of a one of the roots comes up sort of parallel to the curb of the onion, which is which is quite nice. Um, and of course, there's I don't know if you can see this. There's a bit of a rip in the onion skin. So I'm going to put that in. Um, Sort of comes around like this and up here, and it's quite a useful um, it's quite a useful bit of line really because it, what it does is it sort of wraps around the curvature of the onion as a sort of midpoint, so it describes how that curve, how the form of the onion is behaving at that point. So that's quite good. So we want that. That's there. Right. So we've got the first ellipse, which is the onion. And then the second one we've got shadow, uh, which is actually, we've got two shadows happening at the moment because we've got the light up there, but I've also got a window open just to the side. So um, I'm going 
can I have to sort of tackle that? We'll, we'll do, I'll do the, the, the smaller shadow, the inside shadow first. Um, because if you can build your drawing using a smaller estimations to begin with, um, then they're easier to sort of establish. And once you've built up a, a series of the smaller estimations, then the larger ones seem to sort of find themselves because they tend to sort of relate to those smaller ones. And um, I'll show you what I mean here because now I've got this the smaller shadow, the bigger one. I can simply relate to that first one. I say, okay, so it's a little bit taller here, a little bit wider here. Um, yeah, sort of come, sort of, sort of follows around this way, something like that. Great, okay, I'm sort of, yeah, I'm relatively satisfied with that. And obviously, like I did say before, you know, starting quite sort of broad, quite loose. If I want to, I can tighten this up later, I can sort of sharpen things. Um, I don't have to, like, sometimes it's quite nice to have a drawing that's quite free, so open, so it's sort of sketchy. Um, depends what you want, really, there's, there's no one way to draw. Um, depends really what you're after, so. Great, so that's sort of stage one. Um, stage two, then, will be about achieving the sort of light effect, and that's tone. What we want to do is establish some tone. Um, so what I'm going to do is start quite broad again. Let's start down here on the shadow, because that's nice and simple. I'm just going to show you some hatching. So that's a series of parallel lines. Nice and quick, get it on. Bash, 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 lovely. Um, yeah, and so... They so that's the shadow toned in. And basically, if I start with a sort of middle tone like this, nice and loose, then where areas are slightly darker, I can then I can then work up, you know, afterwards. So but to begin with we just want to get something down. Um yeah. I am gonna put this darker sort of bit of darker detail here. Yeah. Lovely. Nice and sketchy, nice and loose. I think I'm going to build this up in in hatching and cross hatching. Um, hatching obviously is a series of parallel lines. Cross hatching is where uh, layers of parallel lines uh, cross over like that. So you get the cr cross hatching essentially. It's very brilliantly self-explanatory that one. Um, so I'm going to darken the shadow in here. Right. So I'll come back to the shadow later. I want to get onto the form of the onion, so we've got a sphere, so we've got a, a directional light, 45 degrees, sort of coming in like so. Um, so what that means is, as I said earlier, you've got the lightest part, the highlight, which I'm going to leave as the paper. It's the brightest, the brightest tone we can achieve in this drawing using graphite and white paper is the actual tone of the paper, so that's going to be the, the highlight there. We've also got a lovely sort of band of darker tone, wrapping its way around the sort of middle section of, of the onion, sort of like in, in that sort of direction. Um, yeah, so we've got lightest middle tone around it, darkest tone sort of through the centre. But also something else that's sort of interesting happening, um, and that's something called reflected light. Uh, and what that means is, because the paper is very bright, white and reflective, the light is coming down here, bouncing and hitting the underside of the onion, which would otherwise be in shadow, but it means that it's it's lighter than the middle section here. Um, so basically, because the shadow is a dark, a dark tone, because this is very is right next to it, you get a high contrast, and it can make the reflected light seem very bright. But in reality, you have to sort of double check this because in reality, the tone of the reflected light is probably similar to the middle tone here. Certainly not as bright as the uh, as the highlight. So I'm going to be aware of that when I go into my tones now. Right, which means that we've got <laughs> the brightest tone, highlight, middle tone around it and underneath, and then a middle band section of darker tone there. Okay. And, yeah, so I mean, I think what I'm going to do to start with is actually, let's establish some of this middle tone. I want this highlight to appear bright so that the thing to do is to um, create that contrast between the tones. Actually, I can see that there's a lovely sort of 
um, where the onion skin is sort of has ridges in it. One of those is very central, so I'm going to just draw that through there. We draw a few of these other ones. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're at home and you're not drawing an onion, you're drawing an apple or a lemon or a potato or whatever you happen to have in the cupboard, um, then obviously your subjects will have different details, and you should go along with those. Um, as you sort of see fit really because this what we're doing here is a sampling tone and some of those tones are related to details and and, uh, and so sort of you know if if it comes to a pass you're like oh well it feels sensible now to sort of actually just put that there and, and do that right back to the uh, yeah so again building up and hatching nice and loose I'm not aiming for a sort of super photographic finish with this one um, because that would take ages and it would mean you'd have to sit there and watch me do it, which would take absolutely ages. Um, but we're going to do a, a sort of a looser, sort of sketchy version. Yeah, so what I'm doing, I'm just going to put in marker points. I've made this contrast here between the highlights and the middle tones around it, as I said. Um, I think what I tend to do to begin with is is actually do sort of establish those contrasts. So what I've also seen is that there's a little bit dark shadow on this side, on, on this edge of the onion, um, and it's dark against the white paper background. So I'm just going to go and, and stick that in there. Um, this little guide, really. sort of enhancing some of these shadows now. Um, now as I've built the tone up it's become you know much denser. We've got much more sort of established sort of middle tones here. Um, and as that happens, you know, there's often sort of you know, alter various bits as they as they sort of require it as, as the whole thing progresses. But yeah, I mean I am quite I'm sort of it's coming along it's coming along okay, so that's that's good. Um, And there's different sort of levels of detail you can do as well. I mean, I'm going to leave this as a sketch, so I'm not going to sort of worry about um, crossing all the I's and dotting all the T's, so to speak. Um, but I do just want to get an idea of that light effect. And that, um, yeah. 
make it seem nice and sort of spherical, really, because that's that's the object of the exercise. Yeah, and it's sort of starting to starting to sort of do that. So nice, nicely, nicely doing it. Uh, Right, this bit and this bit seem a bit too close in tone for my liking, so I'm just going to... Because we really want that highlight to shine, we, we want that to sort of be really bright, so in order to achieve that, um, we're going to have to tone down the areas near it, sort of the areas around it. Um, so let's just do that now. Just bring this tone up to the top, it does go up to the top. Uh, da, 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 here we go. If I sort of squint, squint, squint again, and that's going to help um, see the tones. Yeah. Sort of through there. We have to be quite delicate with these highlights because you don't want to go too dark because otherwise it always look weird. Um, And then any, um, any sort of sort of parts that are you know have a sharp contrast, like here and here, I see is like very bright and very got a little bit darker there. Try and put that in, but then most of it, you know, is quite soft. It's quite a soft gradation of tone. You know, light a little bit darker, a little bit darker. Um, so that's also something to look out for if you have a highlight on yours, your apple or whatever, um, or your onion, hopefully an onion. Gonna like put a little bit of uh, sort of specific detail of, of some of the markings on the skin. Just an idea. I mean, you know, you just want to have an idea, really, a suggestion. Some of these um, roots, I think they are, aren't they? How many there is that one parallel? So we put that back in. Something like that. And then uh, lost the rip in the skin, so re establish that. And then up here, what have we got? Um, so the sort of dovety bit is casting a shadow. So we're going to do that. Got a little dark shadow in here. Dark shadow sort of here. It sort of spins around this bit. Um, so we need to try and describe that somehow. Um, yeah. Carefully look at sort of which bits are the darker bits, which bits are the lighter bits. Use directional um, pencil strokes to say sort of which direction things are moving in. So this whole thing is, is darker than the highlights, so turn it all down. Cool. Great, okay, that's good. Let's do that there. Soften 
on that edge by making it slightly darker. I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, okay, so that's just uh, what else do we need to do with the shadow. Soften that edge. I mean, I think I'm nearly sort of happy with that really. Um, yeah, it's been a nice exercise. I think it's described the form, it describes the reflective light. Um, got that detail. Cool, yeah, okay. Um, maybe just a bit darker there. Got the things I'll just keep going forever and ever and ever at fiddling. <laughs> Unless I say stop. So sometimes you just have to say, that's enough, that's done. So I'm going to do that now. That's enough, that's done. Great. Lovely. Thank you all very much for uh, tuning in to watch me draw an onion. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'll be doing more of these videos, so check back if you'd like in further weeks. And I hope your drawings came along very well at home if you were drawing along. So thanks.